Welcome in to the Punt Impasse podcast. I'm your host, Drew Butler. Join alongside my co-host, Jake Fromm. Be sure to follow us on social media at Punt and Pass on Twitter and Instagram. I am at Drew Butler. He is at From Jake. Head on over to puntandpass.com, the number one destination for all things college football. Getting some new Punt and Pass rope hats in, I believe, today, Jake. So Let's you go. will be getting one. Need Head on one. over to puntandpass.com. Check out the locker room. It's our merch page. Order yours now. So great to talk to you, my man. You were uh, out hunting later this evening, huh? Pretty hot, though. Told you man. about that false fall. It's hot now. It was definitely a false fall. Hopefully, this is the last week. Uh, I think the weather said maybe tomorrow is the last hopefully hot day. Man, I'm ready for that fall weather, man. Let's go. No doubt. No doubt. Ready for that fall weather. Ready for a little crisper air. So those deer come out from my man Jake from. Um, <laughs> yes, sir. I'm not exactly the biggest hunter, but I know you are. So I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do right by you. I'm going to learn go. about hunting. Okay. You Let's can, do uh, it. We can do it. There you go. You can you can help me out for sure. But hey, we want to help out our listeners and get this. How hot has the Punt and Pass podcast been at the start of season six? If you were at our live show, we gave away two tickets to the Chick-fil-A kickoff game. Obviously, leading up to the Chick-fil-A kickoff game, we gave away that Rec Tech Ultimate Home Gate slash Tailgate bundle. Drew Richardson was the winner of that giveaway. And now we have four tickets to give away to the Kent State game. How great is that? Dude, Four tickets awesome. who have been donated by a close friend of mine, a former Georgia alumni who also played in the NFL for a long, long time. He's not going to the game, or actually he is going to the game, but his rest of his family's not. He said, hey, I got four tickets. Give him away on the podcast, so thank you very much. Here's what you have to do. Go to Punt and Pass on social media. Fill out the quick Google form. Sign up for prize picks. We'll get to that in a second. Fill out the Google form, and you will be entered to win four free tickets to the game this weekend, Georgia at Kent State. If you sign up for prize picks, you will be entered into the giveaway. And this episode of Punt and Pass, of course, is presented by our awesome partners over at Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app. Use the promo code PUNT, P U N T, PUNT. When you download the app, you get a 100% deposit match up to your first $100. NFL football, college football, Major League Baseball, and the playoffs are right around the corner. You can do cross board entries. You can win 10 times your money in just a few clicks. Download the Prize Picks app. Go to prizepicks.com. Use the promo code PUN. Prize Picks is simply the best daily fantasy game out there. Longtime supporters of the podcast. Shout out to Prize Picks. I got my Prize Picks hat on right now. If you're watching on our YouTube page, Jake, lots to get to there. A little bit of housekeeping. It's time to go three and out. We'll start with first down, man. Big weekend ahead in the SEC. College game day, Florida, Tennessee. Neutral site game with Arkansas and Texas A&M. I'm pretty fired up. Dude, it's going to be a good one. Uh, obviously, the Florida-Tennessee game. Uh, but one that snuck up on me was the Arkansas-Texas A&M game. I had no yeah. idea that was going to be a neutral site in Dallas. That's really cool. I think so. It's going to be fun for the fans out there. Uh, man, good weekend. Let's go. Yeah, no doubt. Arkansas ranked number 10, taking on yeah. number 23, Texas A&M. Like Jake said, that is at AT&T Stadium, a.k.a. Jerry's World in Dallas. I believe they call it like the Southwest Showdown. I forget what the official title of it is, but remember Jerry Jones, Arkansas alumni, Texas A&M, close to Dallas, I think relatively close. A yeah. great SEC West matchup. We'll get to that one in a second, but the SEC East matchup that has taken center stage, and of course we'll give you our game breakdown when we go inside the five, is number 20. 20 in Knoxville to take on number 11, Tennessee college game day will be there on site. I saw bar stools having their college football show there on site sec on CBS at three 30. I mean, this is as big as it gets yeah. and it's possibly a great opportunity for Tennessee to get the monkey off their back. Jake Florida has won 16 out of the last 17 games in this series as a player. How on earth do you get over that hump? Man, that's a tough hump, but every year's a new year. Yeah. It's it's cliche to say, but this is a, a rebranded, this is a new Tennessee team, uh, different philosophy on offense. They're doing a, a great job. And you mentioned a stat where you know uh, Florida has won 16 the last 17. Well, I got a stat for you, Drew. Oh, I love it. And my stat for you is Tennessee is third in the country, in total offense. Just for reference, just for reference. Now, us watching Georgia's offense, and Georgia's offense is sixth in the country. 
and we think they are firing all cylinders. Yeah. Tennessee is third in total offense, and Florida's defense is 77th in the country. So I love, love, love that matchup. Yeah, you know, that, that's great. You bring up Florida's defensive statistics. We're going to get to this in third down. Obviously, everybody anointed Florida as upcoming team of the year after they beat Utah, <laughs> which seems like it was so long ago because they've looked a bit more pedestrian yeah. as of late. But it this this aligns perfectly for Tennessee to just run it up on Florida. Get rid of that moniker that they can't beat the Gators. They're favored by 10.5 points. It's the largest they've been That's favored crazy. in the series in 25 years, Jake. My buddy Tony Morelli, longtime listener of the podcast, he's already texted me. He's a huge Tennessee fan. He's like, I'm scared Anthony Richardson's going to look like Danny Warfel. Of course, they're going to have their greatest game ever. And what I told him was this. I saw this statistic. You want a great statistic to Man. ease the ter- tensions of the Tennessee fan base? Tennessee is 1-0 and against Florida on September 24th in series history. So I texted him. I said they've played once in the series on September 24th. That is all you need to know. You're going to win. You're one to know. But that's what I'm talking about. Like, Georgia had that against Alabama. I'm sorry to bring up a sore subject, Jay. <laughs> but when you finally do get that taste of victory and get over that hump, it seems like that's something that can really catapult Tennessee into having the special 2022 season that so many fans and media, and I'm sure the internal coaching staff and players are expecting of themselves. So what would stop them from getting over this hump? It would be a train wreck if they for some reason slowed down on offense yeah. turned the ball over weren't able to get it going and if somehow anthony richardson throws his first touchdown of the season anthony richardson hasn't wow. thrown a touchdown all season jake wow that's awesome speaking of turnovers uh tennessee is tied 23rd in the country they have a turnover margin of plus three on the year and florida uh, is even on the year. I think they're kind of in the middle of yeah. the of the you know the whole realm there, but they're they're even on the year. So Tennessee is doing a great job. Hinton Hooker, like you said, I had no idea has not thrown a touch or an interception. That is awesome. So Hinton Hooker has not thrown an interception, and Anthony Richardson has not thrown a touchdown. Is that correct? I believe so. Yeah, that's well, crazy. It will be crazy. And what I thought about, and again, we'll give you our game prediction, is Tennessee did get slowed down to a point against Pitt. So clearly Florida has been diving into that film room going, how do we at least contain these guys to keep the game close? Because nothing about Florida's offense would tell you that if it gets into a foot race, they can keep up. That is clearly what Josh Heupel, Hendon Hooker, and that volunteer offense will be trying to do. It's going to be loud in Neyland Stadium. That is a place where if they get behind that football team, it's dangerous to play in. I am really looking forward to, to tuning into this one, Jake. Yeah, I completely agree. And then speaking on that, if Tennessee can get up big early and put Florida in a position where they have to throw the ball. Yeah, it could be a long I, I think that's going to be really tough for them. And I know that if they can get up early, Neyland Stadium is going to be rocking. It's going to be tough for them to operate, communicate. Third downs are going to be tough. Ooh, could be All bad. Right. Could be back All right. Quick. Now, Tennessee has played Ball State, Pittsburgh, and Akron. Okay. Pittsburgh obviously went to overtime. Pitt was ranked 17th at the time, but Tennessee's averaging 52 points a game. They're only allowing 14. Florida averaging 25 points a game, giving up 26 points a game. So, yeah. I'm just saying, just, just to just, I don't know, I'm just curious to compare apples Please. to oranges here. Do you think Tennessee's win over, Pittsburgh is better than Florida's win over Utah on the road. You know, Pitt, a good team, Keaton Slovis, obviously that's a tough comparison. Um, It's it's apples to oranges. Yeah. Yeah. Apples to oranges, but that's a good question. I I like that question. So remains to be seen. I'll answer that after Saturday. How about that? That's my (laughs) cop out answer. So I'll answer it after Saturday, but we talked about Arkansas, Texas A&M. That's the sec West premier matchup this weekend. A great, Great chance for Sam Pittman, KJ Jefferson, and the Arkansas Razorbacks to take a step forward because, look, if they beat Texas A&M, Arkansas is going to be in a really good position in the SEC West. I don't think they're going to be scared of Auburn. I don't think they're going to be scared of LSU. Uh, They'll circle that Alabama game later on in the season, but this is step one to to starting something really special in Fayetteville. They had that taste last year. Then, of course, that all started to fall apart when Georgia smacked them 37 to nothing in Athens. 
They've learned. They know what it takes now. This could be a really important game on the 2022 schedule for Arkansas. And I think after that scare they had last week with a very slow start, I think their their focus should be, in theory, much more at a higher level this yeah. week than it was last week. So if they can get out to a good start, I I, I like them. They're going to play a physical smash mouth football. Uh, Texas A&M, I, I still I don't think they have an identity yet. They no. don't know what it is. They switched over quarterbacks. I think Max looked better than. Uh, it's, it's Haynes King, right? Yeah. Haynes King. Yeah. Haynes, Haynes King. He, he looked better than him and in, in operating. So, uh, they just don't have an identity yet. Maybe they can come out with one this game if they're able to win. I personally don't think so. Um, I'm rolling with the, uh, the Pitten, uh, Razor, Razor Hogs. But yeah, man. That's I don't know. Boy. Now, do you know Max Johnson pretty well? Obviously a local kid, Brad Johnson's his dad. I don't know if he was around the program or if you guys had thrown it around a little bit, but good to see him get an opportunity and get a yeah. big win against Miami last week. Yeah. I mean, that's what he transferred there for was to, to go play and play big football games. I I've met Max a few times, met his dad and uh, I haven't thrown or, or really spent too much time with him, but great folks, great family. And have you ever seen, um, have you ever seen his dad on TikTok? Big bad Dude, Brad. Yeah, do it. <laughs> do it the cool. best. Yeah, that's, that is pretty neat. So he, Big Bad Brad, uh, who is Coach Rick's brother-in-law, I believe, yep. right? Brad Johnson yep. married Coach Rick's sister. And Brad Johnson's a Super Bowl champion. Hell, he had to have been in the NFL for almost 20 years. Yeah. He's got a TikTok channel, TikTok channel, which is actually a pretty good following. He does trick oh, shots. Oh, a good follow. Yeah. Great. I think Sean Chappis told me about Big Bad Brad. Big uh, Bad Brad. Is Big Bad Brad better than uh than Chad Powers? Oh my god, I'm so glad you brought that up. The <laughs> Eli Manning, Chad Powers, um, you know, prank, I guess you could call it. Eli's doing the oh, second. Season. How how re- how recent was it was Eli's that? Places. Well, it had to be a couple of weeks ago because it was during uh walk-on tryouts for the football team. So, right, they had to have cut that relatively, you know, I think at beginning of August when, when class started. If you haven't seen it, uh, I'll tweet it out. I have tweeted it out at Drew Butler. Eli Manning went undercover and tried out for Penn State's walk-on, you know, tryouts football team. And, you know, is given the most ridiculous answers. These coaches, I obviously <laughs> James Franklin, the head coach, knew what was going on. But some of the other coaches are watching him throw it, Jake, and they're like, Man, this Chad Powers guy, he's got something. Like, got I think I see in. something in him. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, hilarious. I mean, the fact that he was able to – I mean, my my jaw was just to the floor the entire time. I could not believe this was serious yeah. and that he went undercover like this. I mean – Did he it, run a 5 4 nine, 40, yeah. like a 5, five yeah. nine, 40 or something like that? So funny, dude. But but the Mannings are ginormous human beings. Yeah. Like you can't – you can't oh, Eli's 6'5", yeah. Yeah, you can't miss a Manning. If, if it was somebody else – just say Johnny Manziel, for example, okay? Not a ginormously statured guy. Yeah. He could go undercover and do something like that. But Eli Manning, and you miss that? Oh, that's not They're good. asking him because he that's said he's good. homeschooled and the coaches yeah. were asking about homeschooled. And one coach goes, uh, did you get good grades? And he goes, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. And he goes, who is your teacher? And he goes, my mom, she wasn't that smart. I mean, that is so <laughs> funny. I'm like, God, it's so quick too. It's hilarious. Did you go to the Manning Passing Academy? Oh, yeah. How was oh, yeah. that? Tell me about they're, that. Man, they're awesome. Great experience. Uh, you know, they it's a, it's a work camp, tight ship. But uh, off the clock during the during the evenings, we'd have big get togethers, big uh, just tons of food, great people there. I mean, you, there's no telling who, who you'll meet there at uh, the MPA, but the Mannings are an awesome family. Great people. They are absolutely hilarious. They're so quick. Awesome. The funniest of them all, though, is definitely Cooper. Is that Cooper, right? Oh, he is the best, man. He is. So how do you he, get invited? If you're just a premier quarterback, you get invited. Is there a cap? Is it? 40 quarterbacks is it 10 quarterbacks what is that selection process like i believe it's the number is somewhere between 20 and 40 they okay. take just kind of the top guys there um who they think in in college and uh they want good guys there too because it's about the kids it's, it's a lot of work going into it uh and their names on it so if they want to represent it well and um get a lot of work in because so, uh, there, there's a there's a bunch of kids there who, who are looking up to these guys and, no question yeah 
No question. So when you go as Jake from Georgia quarterback, you yep. are working with the high schoolers and the younger kids, right? But do you yep. get coaching from Peyton and Eli and the rest of the guys before camp starts or how does that yeah. look? Yeah, that, that's what's definitely pretty neat about it. So I can't remember exactly what time of day, but there was times of the day in between when we're coaching for us to go out for an hour, hour and a half to get coached by the Mannings and my personal quarterback coaches there with his crew, uh, David Morris at QB country. Um, and they're, they're the best. So David Morris and Eli Manning were teammates at Ole Miss. Okay. Da David played for a year before Eli got there. Obviously the rest is history there. Eli yeah. plays and he becomes a career backup, but um, he ended up training Eli when he played for the giants and um, built his brain off that. But anyway, you get a lot of great coaching and you coach as well. So it's a, it's a, it is a really neat experience. That's fascinating. You went two years or just one? Uh, two. Okay. And then my last question off the clock, the camaraderie in the evening, is it like all football talk or are you guys chopping it up with friends? Or it's a lot more like lax, right? Cause that's oh, where Johnny that's... Manziel uh, got, was hung over, missed the meetings and they sent his ass home. Right. Oh yeah. 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 So, I mean, it, yeah. there, 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 there's some freedom there, but you're also of smart course. too. Now yeah, there, there, there's not a whole lot going on, uh, down there, uh, where we have it. I believe it's at Nichols, uh, college, yeah. um, or Nichols state or something where we have it. So there's not a whole lot going on and they know everybody around there knows the MPA is going on. So yeah, you gotta, have, you gotta have your antenna up. Okay. Everybody's looking for somebody to mess up. Don't be that guy. Don't be an idiot. No doubt. Fascinating. Sorry to get off on that tangent, but that is, um, that's awesome stuff. Jake yeah. from two time Manning passing Academy alumni, giving us the ins and the outs of what goes down there at Nichols in Louisiana. Stetson was there too this past year. Pretty cool stuff. So yeah, I saw that. All right, let's go to second down. This is a quick one. Quarterback for UNC Chapel Hill, Drake Mays makes a funny remark in the media. They're about to play NC state this week. And then has to come around and apologize for it. I mean, are you absolutely kidding me? So a little bit of background, doing his, I believe, Monday or Tuesday presser leading into the NC State game this weekend, which, of course, is a massive um, rivalry in the state. I'm just going to make oh, sure yeah. it is this week, right? That, that is this week. NC. Okay, no, they were talking. They did not play NC State this weekend, but he was talking about – NC State and Drake Mays was like, hey, you know, I looked up to a guy like Sam House. Sam grew up in Carolina. I grew up in Carolina. If you grew up in Carolina, you are a UNC fan. Anybody who goes to NC State just goes to state because they couldn't get into Carolina. Ha ha, funny, harmless. The guy has to turn around and apologize the next day. I'm sorry for my inappropriate comment. Hey, dude, newsflash, it wasn't inappropriate. It was yeah. funny. He should have doubled down on it and been That's like, uh, yeah, I mean, just like lean into it. But yes, somebody must have told him to say like, uh, apologize. Are you kidding me? What yeah. he didn't do anything wrong, Jay? That's crazy. No, man, I I hate it for him and all this outside random peer pressure to get him to apologize. I mean, come on, what are we talking about? It's a harmless joke. Every everybody, everybody it, says that in every rivalry. Yeah, in every rivalry in every state, something's to be said. I mean, you could you could go on and make that argument for any other place in Georgia. I, you just it, it's everywhere. The jokes everywhere. I wish he would have doubled down on it. <laughs> but yeah, they, he, play, they play NC State the Friday after Thanksgiving. This is okay. his official Twitter apology for simply saying people who go to NC State go there because they can't get into UN or uh, NC. Yeah. Yes, yes, I just messed that up, but yes, yeah. you got that. I got he you. says, "Quote." You know what you I mean. Mean, <laughs> I, I made a remark today about NC State, and I want to apologize. I was answering a question about playing in state and said something I shouldn't have. I said it as a joke, but it was inappropriate. I feel bad and need to do a better job re representing our program in this university. Hey, Drake, no, you don't need to apologize. No, it was not inappropriate, and you're doing just a fine job representing your state and university. Yep. So um, just relax. And to all these sports information directors out there, relax. Get out yeah. of these kids' business. It was a funny joke. Yeah. Last thing I'll say, it's just – I don't know for absolutes, but probably it was someone getting offended on someone else's behalf. Yeah. You know, just, yeah, of course, man, just come on, let's go move on. It was a joke. It was great. Double down next time. And then throw for 400 and four tutties. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Be, let's move on to third down. Drake Mays, big fans here of you. And we're big sticking fan. out for you. Yeah. Right yeah. The, the uh, big, yeah, big, yeah. Big fan. For you, like, he cannot be serious. That is crazy. Should not have had to apologize.
All right. Speaking of talking and, and saying mm. specific things, let's move on to down to third down. Okay. And we got to touch on the rat poison that is circulating the Georgia program right now. I mean, you're reading articles, Jake. You're seeing <laughs> comments. You're listening to talking heads in the media who have suddenly woken up to Georgia being a very good football team. You know, knock, knock. They are the defending national champs. Yep. And the E words getting thrown around a little bit uh, that, of course, being elite. Are they better than last year? I read a couple of articles that saying this is a team that is better than the national champions of a year ago. And then Peter Burns on SEC Network gets on the TV, Jake, and he says Georgia in 2022 is possibly one of the best teams ever in the history of college football and predicts that they will not win a game by less than 10 points this entire season. I'm like, hold on, okay? Hold on two seconds, as I like to say. These are the same guys that after week one, when Florida beat Utah, were saying Napier's coach of the year, Richardson's a Heisman candidate, watch out for Florida, I'm off on Kentucky. We cannot buy into this as a fan base. You cannot buy into it as a player at Georgia. I'm sure Kirby is managing these expectations. Uh, Kirby absolutely hates it. Hates it. He hates it. If he could turn every TV off, for his staff and his players so they'd never see anything ever again he would do so uh look i think they're an incredible football team i think everything is ahead of them if they just keep doing what they're doing they stay focused the discipline to what people don't understand is yes it is a physical toll to play the sec gauntlet and go throughout it but mentally week in and week out to get your mind focused to play at the, your highest level week in and week out, that's tougher than anything physically that you have to do. So mm -hmm. it is, it's tough and it doesn't matter who you're playing. Anybody can beat you, but they have some great players. Kirby's... And they kick ass. I mean, like that's, <laughs> I mean, like, they do. that's the number and they're, one and they're, thing. And they're playing great. Yeah. They're dominating teams. Yeah. Um, I think what they did to South Carolina, we said it on Monday's podcast, was something that nobody really saw coming. 48 to nothing for the entire game, and SC sneaks in a touchdown late. Stetson getting in the Heisman talk legitimately now. People are talking about Brock Bowers and how he should be a legitimate Heisman candidate. So take us inside the locker room. Like, what is Kirby saying to the team at practice? Is he breaking them down, going, y'all are trash, you guys think you're better than you actually are? Or is he simply helping them manage the expectations? Probably things that he's learned from Coach Saban and his time at Alabama, because this really is, for Georgia fans, the first time where collectively the media is like, watch out, Georgia's a freight train, they can beat anybody, nobody's as good as them. Yeah, for me, if uh, I wish, I wish everybody could understand what goes on at practice. But he he he's got a microphone in his hand at practice, and he he's definitely doubling down on him himself and his coaching and and who he's coaching because he doesn't want anyone there to take their foot off the gas. So I can co-sign that. I've been to a couple practices, and I am worried that Kirby might see me out of the corner of his eye and just want to and, and rip, rip you into one because yeah, he will, and everybody can hear it. Yeah, it, 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 which it, he's, he's relentless like, as a coach. Oh, he is really, especially with that microphone in his hand, which, yes. blo which blows my mind that they let him have one. So the entire Lumpkin, the oh Coliseum, yeah, it is loud. Rankin, I mean, you know. 25 year old mom and, and 20 year old college girl walking down the sidewalk, just, you know, hearing someone getting ripped into, Yeah, there will be no confusion as to what he's saying. Cause it is loud. It is he loud gets after people oh. as a coach during practice for sure. Oh yeah. The intensity is definitely dialed up. So I think for him, he is probably doubling down a little bit more on that, keeping his foot on the gas and making sure nobody else takes their foot off as well. Yeah, and he's learned from the best. That, of course, being Nick Saban uh, in years past when Alabama has gotten all this kind of praise and accolades throughout the season while they are trying to just get prepared for a game like Kent State, right? And, of course, Kirby's got to mm -hmm. manage those expectations and the narratives ahead of a lesser opponent, but then they turn around next week and you got to hit the road and go to Missouri. Um, so it's just interesting. I wanted to get your thoughts, yeah. team meetings, you know, post-practice, what is he saying? And as Jake says, it is a relentless, consistent message of we need to keep doing what we do and protect what we have to make sure that we don't slip up. And um, it seems like Georgia and Kirby Smart have done that 
up to this point. So we'll continue to watch that. And then, you know, Todd Munkin's name is already getting thrown around for head coaching vacancies and could be mm-hmm. vacancies. And uh, I've got thoughts on that too, but you know, I just think Todd Munkin's in a happy spot. Guy's done it all. Guy's seen it all. He's been a lot of places. He's getting paid a boatload of money. Yep. You could probably say, pay me a little bit more and I'll stay here. I don't think he's in any rush to go get a head coaching job. That's just my thought. I personally, just from what I understand coming from his NFL background and the way NIL and recruiting is now, me personally, I just don't see a guy like him wanting to just deal with it and fool with it. Yeah, so life's pretty good enough. Like you said, just, just kind of leverage the job that he, that he had, that he could potentially go get yeah. leverage it a little bit, pay me a little more. I'm good. Let's just keep blowing everybody out, putting up great numbers and, and when in natties, you know, love it. Love it. Good stuff. Easy. Easy All stuff. right. Um, I got a couple statistics and then we're going to get into prize. Picks. Oh, okay. Per my buddy Chris Marler over at Saturday Down South, under Kirby Smart, Georgia is 23-4 and four on the road. All four losses were to SEC West teams, and all four were by an average of 22 points per game. That's pretty interesting. And here's the thing. A lot of people were talking about the 2023 SEC schedules coming out this past week. Who did yeah. Georgia draw next year? Ole Miss, Ole Miss. who was mm-hmm. one of those losses, but they get to play him in Athens. So that is big. Per ESPN's Cole Kubelik, Georgia is 28-2 and two in the SEC East over the past five seasons. And, buddy, those 28 wins are not close. They have been nope. smoking SEC East teams. And then lastly, from my boy Rusty Manziel at 247 Sports. Rusty! The radio with. Georgia is 21-1 and one since losing to Kyle Pitts and Florida in 2020. Average score, 39 to 10. Eesh. Ouch. That's mm. impressive, dude. They're on an absolute war path right now. Yeah. Um, so it's good to say that this is a good trend. For the hey, l- last thing, because I thought this was very interesting. Uh, total defense, stat-wise, three other teams have given up one. Uh, we're talking about defense here. Three yeah. other teams have given up one offensive touchdown. So Georgia's one of them. They gave up the, the touchdown yep. uh, last yep. week. Just one, who, correct. Who were who the other two teams that have only given up one defensive touchdown? Wow. I mean, I couldn't even begin to think. Um, I, I'll give you a hint. One of them is in the SEC. That and would be... It is not who you think either. Okay. Um, no. It's not Kentucky, is it? Mm. No. Um, I don't know. Tell me. It is... Ole Miss. Really? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Shut out against uh shut out against Georgia Tech, obviously. And then I don't know who they played their first two games, but okay. Interesting. Good that for the so Rebels. interesting. Yeah. And then I Iowa was the other one. Iowa, that's a good one. Yep. Yeah. But I just Blaine Kiffin offense was I just well just surprised me. Yeah. Well, I wasn't thinking it. Just the philosophy and the coaching that they would do we uh week to week stuff just Got to blow my mind a little bit. I but. love it, dude. Look, this third down has gone third and long, but I love it. Last one. <laughs> last one. Stetson Bennett has not taken a snap in the fourth quarter yet this season, and it probably is not going to happen this weekend either. That, How about that? Was, that? That, yeah. that was my next question. When yeah. when when does he take a snap in the fourth quarter? I don't know. Rat poison delivered right here. <laughs> Rat by, poison <laughs> by punt and pass. All right. You talked about <laughs> leveraging some good statistics to. Okay. Um, you know, see a good outcome. Can we leverage some of Jake Fromm's picks to win some cash on Let's prize picks, please? Let's get to the hashtag bet the Fromm on a QB only entry of the week presented by prize picks. Download the prize picks app, go to prizepicks.com. Use the promo code punt P U N T punt. When you sign up, you get a 100% deposit match up to your first $100. You of course can leverage the hashtag bet the Fromm on it qb only entry of the week or dive into major league baseball nfl is absolutely the best love getting active on some thursday night nfl football over on prize picks you can win 10x your money in just a matter of minutes payouts are instant prize picks is the best daily fantasy sports game founded and started by one of georgia's own Mr. Adam Wexler. So shout out to Adam. Shout out to the Price Picks crew. Very Tell nice. The Price Picks app. Use the promo code PUNT. All right, Jake. Um, we were looking at the board before we started yeah. 
recording. We got some QBs and some high profile matchups in the SEC. Stetson Bennett, who we just got done talking about, is playing Kent State. There are a few attractive stats that you could place an entry on. And just a note for everybody listening, because we talked about it on Monday's podcast. When Jake gives these out, depending on what the action is, they will move before Saturday. So get in now. Get into your prize picks app. Use the promo code PUNT and put these entries together. Let's leverage these picks to win some cash. Jake, talk to me, brother. I like it. Thank you for mentioning uh, yes. when we give the picks. I Man, protect you. Put That's them right. in. Appreciate right. that. That's huge. Uh, first up on the board, Hendon Hooker. Uh, they are – I just – man. I, so you got Hendon Hooker versus Anthony Richardson, who is supposed to be the Heisman Trophy winner. Um, so I yes. like Tennessee in this game. We'll touch on that later. Uh, I think they're going to go up early. I think they're going to go up big early. Uh, Hendon Hooker's number is tw- uh, 288 and a half. I think he will be over. For passing yards, correct. For passing yards, yes, sir. And then Anthony Richardson, passing yards, 190 and a half. See, because I think Tennessee will get up big early, it'll put Florida in a one-dimensional offense. I think I think he has to be over 190 and a half. Okay. I, I, and I think... He gets his first passing touchdown. Oh, of the year. that's right. Anthony Richardson has not had a passing touchdown yeah. yet in 2022, even though he has already won the Heisman based on his week one performance, performance against Utah, yeah. as Jake just said. Do you think, and I totally get it, Tennessee gets up big, Florida has to pass. Tennessee yeah. obviously gets back probably into some zone concepts or some prevent concepts to you know protect against the big play. Do you think Billy Napier, like if it's just going south on Florida's offensive side of the ball, could he take Anthony Richardson out of the game, or is there too much pressure to leave him in? Because that's the only thing where I'm thinking 190 doesn't happen, because I agree with you. I think Tennessee gets up early. They're going to be so fast-paced. I don't know. I ooh, I think that will be super tough to take him out because he's already predicted to be the second quarterback taken off the board in next year's draft. So that's going to be tough. I know. Uh, that's going to be very tough. Uh, so, Hayden Hooker over. Anthony Richardson over uh, 190 and a half. Okay, right. next game we got uh, – who we have? We have Arkansas versus Texas A&M. KJ Jefferson, I thought this was a pretty low number, 185 and a half. Um, I think this is going to be a really good game. I think this is one of those that's going to be back and forth. I think Texas A&M, even though they don't have an identity, I think they're going to have a little bit more of their mojo back. Yeah. Hey – we, we got we, we ran off with our tails between our legs versus App State, but we beat a good team in Miami at home, got a good feel back. So I, I like both these guys in the over. KJ Jefferson's at 185 and a half uh, passing yards. I think he can go over. Uh, the Max Johnson one at 225 and a half. Last week, he threw for 140 yards uh, with one touchdown. <sighs> Let's go under. You're going to go Max under Johnson. Max Johnson. I'm going to go under. I'm going to go 25 and a half. I'm going to go years. under. I, I think yeah. he he will have more success, but I think it's going to take more time for that offense to really get clicking yeah. to what it needs to be to be competitive in the SEC West. Absolutely. And neutral side game, of course, yeah. in Jerry World, not going to be the creature comforts of Kyle Field. Max Johnson, he has played in big games as he did a year ago at LSU, but – that Arkansas defense is is not anything to sniff your nose at. So as of right now, we got Hendon Hooker over 288 and a half passing yards against Florida. Anthony yep. Richardson over 190 and a half passing yards against Tennessee. KJ Jefferson going over the 185 and a half passing yard projection against AM. And on the flip side, Max Johnson under 225 and a half passing yards. Do you want to put a fifth in there? Or are we sticking with four this week? Talk. I'm going to, gonna, uh, so I'm going to put a, 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 a wild card fifth in there. Okay. Because I'm scared to death of Stetson this week. At Kent okay. State. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no reason. He might play a quarter and a half. Who knows? Yeah. We have no idea. Uh, but Bryce young, two sixty five and a half versus Vanderbilt. I don't think that Bryce young is thrown for over 260 yards yet this year. Okay. And Alabama's turnover margin this year on the year, three games in, is minus two on the year. That is so That's unlike, not Alabama-like, that yes. Is, that is not Alabama football. They're going to turn it around at some point. I don't know when it's going to be. And so I'm just going to keep predicting it's this game. And yeah. so I, I think it's this one, Vanderbilt. Ah, they're, they, are, they are definitely better, but they are not – 
going to compete with Alabama better right now. So I'm going to go over with okay. Bryce Young at 265 and a half. All right. And I think it's kind of time to where Alabama starts playing like Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, always a good opportunity to start doing that against Vanderbilt. Yeah. Bryce Young over 265 and a half passing yards against Vanderbilt rounds out the Jake Fromm hashtag bet the Fromm on it. QB only entry of the week over on prize picks. To recap, Hen and Hooker over. Anthony Richardson over. KJ Jefferson over. Max Johnson under. Bryce Young over their passing yard projections. Download the prize picks app. Go to prizepicks.com. Use the promo code PUNT. This is the weekend. We're going to do it, man. Week four. Are you kidding me? Jake Fromm delivering up five pick entry winners over on prize picks. Hashtag layups. bet the Fromm. Layups, the man says. I will put my entry in and I will tweet it out at Drew Butler at punt and pass. Thank you, Jake. Thank you for the research there. That's good stuff. I like it. All right, let's go inside the five. Let's wrap this thing up. Five picks update. I'm five and 10 against the spread on the season. I I like that. Jake is seven and eight though. Look, Mm -hmm. the rookie right here on punt and pass pressing the old timer. Things change this weekend. All odds Mm -hmm. are from betonline.ag. Holler at me if you want to get active on betonline. Here's the thing. I have Kent State at Georgia on here, though, but I might switch it up. I'm going to the game with my family this weekend. Uh, As you know, Jackie's pregnant, so we're going to bring Kara. It's her first game. We'll get a little picture. It'll be great. Probably the only game we make it to all season. But do you want to pick the Georgia-Kent State game as one of our five? Or I wrote down two games. I'm throwing these wild cards at you. They're two Pac-12 games. Number 15, Oregon's taken on undefeated Washington State. And number mm-hmm. seven, USC is taken on undefeated Oregon State. Any thoughts there? Do you want to keep it at home with Georgia? Uh, so it's really tough uh, because, I mean, the Kent State, UGA, I think that's a wild card too. Yeah, Wait, 45 is the 45 line. is the line. 45-point favorite. That is insane. Yeah. That is insane. Uh, the over-under, 61-and-a-half. But see, I see Georgia, I see like the score being – like 45 40, to 3. 45 to 3. I don't see them. So under a and Kent State covers. Yeah. So do you want to pick it or no? You tell me, coach. You tell me. I asked you. You can't do that to me. Oh. Uh, Just pick the Georgia game. Let's stick with that. You know, it. let's throw a little 45 pointer in there and see what happens. Go ahead. Uh I just I just gave you a prediction. 45 okay, so to you're 3. Going, yeah, you're taking Kent State with 45 points. Yeah, under under. I mean, okay. Uh, I 45 points. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, uh, I'm going to go on the opposite side. Who the hell am I to bet against Georgia? Uh, we were right on them a week ago with the 24 point spread, which I thought was kind of even crazy against South Carolina. They're at home. This is a real test to see if they're controlling the rat poison that has been circulating around the program all week long. Kent stay. I just don't know if they have what it takes to even put a point on the board. I like Georgia to cover. Um, and I'll lay the 45 as crazy as that is. The defense is for real. The offense seems a bit unstoppable at the moment. Love what Todd Munkin's doing. So Jake and I are on opposite sides. Jake's taking the points. He thinks under, and I believe I said under, did I force you into that? That's not official, uh, but you're take Kent State. I'll lay the 45 with Georgia, which is just crazy to say. Number five, Clemson at number 21, Wake Forest. This game's at noon on ABC. Clemson's a seven-point favorite. This game, of course, in Winston-Salem. The total is 56. Here's the thing. Clemson owns Wake Forest. Yeah. Wake Forest cannot step up. A year ago, they thought they were it. They go into Clemson. A lot of questions around Clemson. Clemson just stomped them. Um, I think this is big brother, little brother type situation. I don't think Wake Forest is at the same level as Clemson is, especially from a defensive standpoint. I like Clemson. I like Clemson by more than a touchdown. Pretty high confidence pick for me here, which you might want to fade, but I love Clemson. Mm, I don't know. See, I, th- could this be the game if Clemson has uh, a couple hiccups that uh, Cade Klubnick comes and, and comes out? He has a coming out party. Could be. I mean, this could is a be? you know ACC game. Yeah. Got to win it. Absolutely got to win it on the road too. Could DJ get shook up? I'm sure that I'm sure that's an interesting environment. I don't know if you've ever been to that stadium, but it's not um, Death Valley. Mm. Much smaller. So who knows? That's a good. Sounds like you're leaning a little wake there. But I'm, thinking... I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna lean wake because okay. why not? Uh, you obviously have not had much success here picking <laughs> these games, and so Home I'm gonna dog. go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go opposite of whatever you think. So. All right. 
There you that's go. What I, that's what I'm doing. Take a wake. Give, give me seven points. Going with Wake, the home dog, catching seven. Sam Hartman's back. Um, noon kick. Our buddies yeah. Sean McDonough and Todd Blackledge and Molly McGrath will be on the call. That's at noon at ABC. Jake thinks it'll be a close one. Wake taking the seven points. I'll lay the seven with Clemson. Uh, I think Clemson is just bigger, badder, and better than Wake Forest. Mm. Uh, game of the week, most people are saying. Number 20, Florida at number 11, Tennessee, 3.30 p.m. Eastern on CBS. Tennessee, a 10.5-point favorite. The total is 61.5. Tennessee, the largest they've been favored in this series, Jake, in 25 years. If you look back, mid-'90s, Danny Warfel, Peyton Manning, Jabbar Gaffney, you know, studs on both sides of the yeah. ball. I think for four or five straight years, each team was ranked in the top five when they played each other in this game. Wow, that yeah. is that's crazy. Uh, definitely for me, the game of the week. I think it's going to be a great game. Uh, I, I think it'll be super exciting, but I do think Tennessee is going to win by more than ten and a half points. So, all right, I'm going to take them. Uh, I I like them. I really do. Uh, I just don't see Florida. They ah, their offense to me. I just it's not like a rhythm offense. It's just a couple couple shots, a few big plays here and there, but it's not a it's not a smooth rhythm to me I, th- I like tennessee's offense and i like that matchup i like the matchup too and i think tennessee's going to come out so fast paced to start yeah. um the benefit of them playing at home with the style of offense that they run it'll be quiet they can get into their positions they can get into their formations and literally try to run florida off the field on defense meaning have them totally gassed get their eyes looking in the wrong way and then go out there and strike when the opportunity presents itself and keep it going i think they try to prove a point here Um, i think this will be a very very popular play which worries me a little bit that place is going to be absolutely on fire saturday i'll lay the ten and a half too scares me a little bit because it's going to be such a popular play but yeah um i'll roll with the vols lay the ten and a half in the SEC West, number 10, Arkansas, taking on number 23, Texas A&M, 7 p.m. on ESPN. A&M is a one-and-a-half point favorite. The total here is 48-and-a-half. I feel like you and I are going to be on the same side here as well. Yeah, that's surprising to me. I I like Arkansas on this one, man. I, I, if you're going to spot me a point, a point and a half on that too, please uh, give it to me all day long. Love the fight in Pittmans. Uh, go Hogs. Yeah, I think that slow start against Missouri State a week ago tells you one thing. They were focused on Texas A&M. You know, they were yeah. looking ahead to yeah, A&M. Absolutely. I That's agree. exactly what was happening. There's no doubt about it. This is a huge game. It goes back to what I said earlier. Arkansas learned a lot in 2021, how to manage success, how to handle all of that public praise. You and I said it. They're one of the most likable teams in the entire country. Yep. They know that this is a game for them that can take them to the next step, right? Can elevate them as a program and say, hey, we can handle the success. We know what it takes week in and week out. They're familiar with Texas a and I know it is a neutral site game. I would expect it to be pretty evenly split in that stadium. Arkansas, of yeah. course, a uh, very, very popular team in that region. I like the points too. Give me the points. I think KJ Jefferson has a breakout game. Um, you and I are on the same side here. Go yeah. out. I uh, like uh, that's what I'm saying. I like the Hawks to win, and you're going to give me a point and a half to do so? Love it. Really long. Love it. It's, it's easy, money. Jake Fromm says. It's easy. Easy. It's easy. Yeah, it's easy. Spe- speaking, of, speaking of Arkansas being a, a likable team, takes me back to that game last year they had uh, versus Ole Miss and that crazy ending. That was a fun game to watch. I know this is complete, you know, yeah. side conversation, but I thought it was just an awesome game. Kind of took me back a little bit. Crazy ending. Uh, but anyway, go Hogs. Love it. Love it. Go Hogs. All right, wrapping things up in the Big Ten. Haven't given the Big Ten much love on this episode. Wisconsin at number three, Ohio State. This is your ABC 7.30 p.m. night game. Ohio State's a 19-point favorite. The total here is 57. Interesting spot. You know, Ohio State, I think they had like 78 points last week against, Ooh. I forget who, some smaller school in Ohio. And – um C.J. Stroud, Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, Henderson, the running back. It's got a lot of power, firepower on the offensive side of the ball here, Jake. Who do you like? Yeah, going back to my stats, the number one ranked team in total offense in the country is Ohio State. I like them in this one. Won't be stopped this week. I like Wisconsin here. I'll take the Ooh, points, plus 19. Wow. Jim Leonard, a great defensive coordinator. I think they're watching that Notre Dame tape, seeing how they can slow down the Ohio State offense. That game was in Columbus as well. 
uh, one or two turnovers, keep the game in front of you, cannot let these receivers start running wide open, maybe make them be a little bit more balanced and not so pass happy. I'm checking the statistics right now. Mm. Rushing yards per game, 207 for Ohio State. Passing yards, 358. Uh, that tells you that they are extremely efficient on the offensive side of the ball. But Mayan Williams, Travion Henderson, you know, I think if Wisconsin can keep C.J. Stroud at bay in the pass game, the game gets slowed down. The game gets shorter from a time on the clock perspective. And I think Wisconsin maybe gets one or two scores and just tries to keep it relatively close. I'll just take the 19 points. I think that's a lot. You're laying uh, 19. Hey, I, I'm going to lay it. And that, you know, there's a reason you're five and 10. Yeah, there and, is. I got to switch this up. <laughs> I've got to switch this up. I love it. So you and I are uh, three games difference there. So we'll see who can make a big move. coming. Maybe, up maybe you have it Four. So la- last thing before we, before we finish up, I-, I had to because it blew my mind, Georgia being a 45-point favorite. I had to look up what was the largest spread ever. Oh, I mean, the largest spread that's ever been, I think, upset was when Stanford beat USC as like a 50-point underdog, and they beat them outright. Um, on a board, what is it, 60 points, 61 points? I have no idea. It was 70 and a half. Who? It was Florida State in 2012 versus Savannah State. So that was Jameis Winston, I mm-hmm. would assume. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a big point. Spread. Did they cover? 70 and a half? I don't know. This is affected. This okay with eight fifty six less than fourth. The score is fifty five to zero, and they appeared to be on their way. Fifty five to zero was it? It was suspended by that bad it? weather. How about that? Oh okay. wow! I bet I bet some people were highly upset. Oh, that's that one. great. That is great. Seventy and a half point spread. Amazing. Amazing. Good stuff, like Jake. Me. Yeah. See that. Uh, looking forward to seeing those Pac-12 games too. Number 15, Oregon at Washington State in Pullman. I was actually in Pullman, Washington in April of this year. Out on the Palouse. Really? They love the Cougars out there. That yeah. would be a cool atmosphere to tune into when you're flipping around that Florida-Tennessee game. And then Oregon State, okay, in Corvallis. I think I told you this on Monday's podcast. Half of their stadium is under construction, and they're still playing there. Oregon State is averaging almost 46 points a game. USC, of course, averaging 50.7 points per game. USC is only a six and a half point favorite. I think this could just be one of those tricky spots. It's a 6.30 p.m. kick. Watch out. I've got that game circled. Uh, going back, and we have to correct me next week if I'm wrong here, but when I was looking at the turnover margin, you know who's number one in the country in turnover margin? USC. Is it really? USC. Yeah. Very opportunistic. Interesting. Yeah. So that's who's, crazy. you didn't mention who's last. You forgot. To oh, mention that this is great. Great, great way to wrap it up. And I hate it too. My brother's there. Yeah. Auburn is 130 out of 131. They're, they're last in the country because Stanford is last at 131. They have minus seven. Auburn's turnover differential is minus eight, but Stanford's only played two games. So they rank them lower than Auburn. It's just bad. And the, the last game versus Penn State, it was just bad. Bad football. You know what's amazing? Them being two and one with an with a minus eight turnover. That that ratio. is that is yeah. huge. They should for, be 0 and three because that is almost impossible to do. That is that is so huge in in wins and losses. That that correlation there. So and w- w- once they start playing in the SEC, SEC West and that gauntlet. Yeah, if they don't if they don't get that fixed, it's gonna be nasty. It's and gonna Brian be Harson re- will be fired be really bad. immediately. Gotta yeah. clean that up, no yeah. question about it. Well, we're gonna clean up on prize picks this weekend, and we I are. can't wait. Get active with the hashtag bet the from on a QB only entry of the week. Download the prize picks app, use the promo code punt. It's the leading over under fantasy game. Just download the app, pick over or under on your favorite players, and enjoy the show. You can make your picks in under 30 seconds. You can win up to 10 times your money all in just one day. And best of all, sign up now. Use that promo code punt. If you deposit 100 bucks, you get an extra 100 bucks. Prizepicks.com. Download the Prize Picks app. 
Use the promo code PUNT. Follow us on social media at Punt and Pass on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Drew Butler. He's at from Jake. PuntandPass.com, the number one destination for all things college football. Check us out on YouTube. Check out our merch page. That'll be live later on this weekend. And we will talk to you on Monday. See you. See you. Looking forward to my hats, Drew. Yes, sir.